So it's been a long time coming, but we are finally going to get on and start building our bench seats, which is quite exciting. You'll have someone to sit, there's not just the bed or the wheel arch box. Finally. <laughs> long overdue, this one. So our original plan right from the beginning of the project was to have like a wraparound, kind of a U-shaped seat going this way, but quite soon into the build we realised that our van isn't actually long enough for us to be able to do that because of this shower here. So our plan is to have a slightly longer bench seat coming along here and just a, a smaller one there. And also we've got the garage door there anyway with our wardrobes so that kind of developed as we went along and the plan for our table is to have a lagoon mounted table so one that swivels round and we can put it into that space you know when we're not using it or whatever we've obviously got lots of wiring here that we need to try and hide away it's a bit of a and mess. yeah lots of temporary switches down there for pumps and things like that which are will be relocated um but yeah hopefully this one won't be too much work. <laughs> too I much think it should work. be a fairly easy project, right? I hope so. I mean, we've actually got a lot of the structures in place anyway, particularly on this side. And, you know, we've got a good good height for our cushions at the back there anyway, because can't go any higher than that, because the bed slides across this beam here. Just got to put a bit of wood across there, a bit of wood across there, there. Yep. Put some seat cushions on it, a bit of a front to it, and it's done. Yeah, let's hope we don't live to regret what you just said um but yeah we'll see <laughs> right what do we start with i don't know <laughs> do you know what's the worst part about these projects is the thinking of it not the actual doing once you've got a plan it's fine isn't it really most of the time yeah yeah but this Definitely. yeah the thinking is is the one thing i'm not gonna miss at all it's exhausting isn't it you can just have brain power for that yep <laughs> and then <sighs> as soon as you finish it back on to the next project. <laughs> and every project is completely different as well. Yeah. So we've just done a whole load of plumbing. So we were a plumber for a while and now we're going to be carpenters again. Yeah. And then we've got to be seamstresses. Yeah. Is that the right word? I think so. Yeah. To make all of the cushions. Upholsters. Have to go on the top. Upholsters, yeah. yeah. Upholsters. <laughs> uh, and it's always new skills. So yeah. yeah. Definitely a learning experience, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So do you want to start with this side? It probably is easier, isn't it? And then at least we'll know what we're doing by the time we get to doing that one. Yeah. So, if we're working to a height of 500 mil, it would be that minus all of that. So minus 16, minus 33, minus 33, minus 33. What does that equal? Ow! Well, that's how it works, Tim. <laughs> it's a bit awkward trying to dry fit it when obviously everything is just falling around. But we'll just cut a few pieces down. There you go. <laughs> just cut a few pieces to try and get an idea of the size and shape we want. <laughs> yeah. How does it look? Does it look decent size from where you are? I think so. I think this is the maximum seat depth that we were going to plan to have we might make it just a little bit less because we do have this little corner that would stick out which isn't a big deal but yeah yeah it's, it's tricky isn't it it's tricky we're trying to build it so that we have obviously enough space to be able to sit on it comfortably but not sticking it out so far that it blocks the walkway and we walk into it all the time yeah it doesn't look too claustrophobic in here. exactly yeah mm. we, we could do it back to where the fridge comes out but when we've got the backrest on here um, that's going to shorten the seat so yeah. a bit of a tight space to tricky bands as usual yeah we just bought some 33 by 33 mil planed um timber which is quite nice because it's all square so actually joining it should be pretty easy yeah we spent some time measuring all the chairs we have in the house and uh they're all different sizes <laughs> every <laughs> single one <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So we've decided to do some half lap joints on these pieces, which we've never done before. We're just trying it out. So we just basically cut out half of each piece like that. Um, and we've just done that on the table saw just by basically incrementally doing it all the way along. You can get some special blades, like a, I think it's a dado stack that you can do. It takes it all out in one go or much bigger chunk anyway. Uh, we don't have anything like that. So we've just done it the slow way basically, but it's worked and we've just sanded it down. Um, and yeah, it's quite nice. So that's going to go together something like this with the half lap joints on the top. And the reason we've done that is because we wanted it so that at every corner, all of the weight is being transferred through the wood to the floor. Um, so obviously this one is sitting on top of that one, so that's nice. But for the one going along the back, it would have to be joined sort of like that. And it's a, not as strong a join because we can screw and glue that. Probably be fine, but we're thinking that we'd prefer to have something under it so it can't like slip through. So um, what we have done with these lap joints is now we can put that on like that, which means we can have all of the corners completely supported. So any weight going there is going straight to the floor. And then to make that work, we've just done the one in the corner, a slightly different size, so it matches up to the same height. Seeing it's a bench seat and we want it to last a long time, just make it really quite nice and robust, hopefully. <laughs> Not yet. diagram and this is the bit that we've just put together and then this is where we finally decide what depth that we want. It's good height though. Yeah. What did we end up with in the end? I think it's 45 centimeters to the top of the frame. Yeah. And then the seat on the top, the cushion. Yeah. Okay so we just stacked up some foam to give the right height. How is it? It's good. I just feel like it's a little bit too shallow. I think we do need to bring it out a bit more. Now that you've got the cushion there, yeah, it does look a bit too It feels small. very upright and, yeah, like I can't slouch if I wanted to. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Not much though. Right, so we just made them a bit longer. Okay. Yeah, I think even though it's only three centimetres, <laughs> it does make a lot of difference. Yeah. All right, you'll go. I think Jackson wants to have a go. I think he wants his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's not built yet. Come back later. pretty much in there and it's fitting quite nicely so we're just trying to play around with how we're going to do the the lid and the top part um, so because our backrest is going to start on this piece of wood coming down we've had to bring out the back a little bit further into the van so that when we open our lid it can rest up against there um, so we've just used a wider plank for that and we've just cut out around this two by three um, just so that fits in nicely. The only thing about that one though was that it wasn't as um, deep as our wood that we've been working with. So what we've done is just made two little strips of 12mm uh, plywood, which just happens to be, with with this one, just happens to be the exact right exactly <laughs> to match the other one. Which it's perfectly is... flush, you can barely even tell it's a different piece of wood, yeah. can you? So that's quite nice. And yeah, so we're just We've got these two pieces which we've already cut down and we're going to make them just slightly shorter than the rest of our frame because 
when we open it we don't want it to scuff on anything we've also got our plug socket that's going to be here so it needs to get past that when we open it and stuff and uh, we're just playing around with some hinges really so we need to cut a groove in this top frame that's going to take the slats when we cut those um, and we do have this really useful router bit which has a little ball bearing on there so it can just run along the edge and cut a nice groove all the way down but unfortunately it doesn't quite give enough depth to be able to get a slat on with a screw in we reckon so yeah can't use that we're going to do it the slightly trickier way we've set up a fence we're just going to use a straight bit and run this along and uh, yeah just got to make sure i don't go all the way to the edge so that we can screw that frame together do it in a number of passes, so yeah, <laughs> taking a while. There we go, it's one frame pretty much done now. Yeah, just gonna make some slack. Yeah. Cuba ones. Nice. <laughs> Almost. Almost. <laughs> nice. Now we just need to clean it up a bit. Saves a bit of money. all of these slats down so they're exactly flush with the top which is really nice we made sure to do the grooves first and then plane the uh, slats to match it so that we could get exactly the right depth which is pretty good please do that yeah. Just halfway through putting the slats screwed into the frame now and what we did with them is that we sanded them all really nicely so there's no sharp edges on them anywhere. We've also left a gap at either end just to allow for a little bit of expansion for the wood if it needs to um, and then what we've done after that is just made two little spaces because we figured out what size space we would need in between each slat to be equal and then we're just putting it there and then just bringing it up like that and then just screwing it down. Looks like we bought it from like here. Yeah it's not bad. It feels pretty strong. to get a bit fiddly isn't it? A little bit. So yeah we've got to put a bracket on to match uh, to strengthen this bit. The other thing we've just had to do is just trim the widths of this a bit because we also realise these hinges need to go in vertically and doing that pushes this out a bit and makes a bit of a gap between them and that pushes this front out and we need this to sit a little bit back. We wanted it a bit recessed so that when the plywood face is on here like that and he's modelling very nicely um, it won't catch on the front. Otherwise, if you had it like that, if you bring it down, you know, it might just scuff it might snag on it. like that a little bit. So yeah, just 
tiny adjustments that should make it all work. <laughs> right, so that should now be the right height. So that just goes under there. Perfect. Okay, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do, but <laughs> well not too bad. You can just chisel out corners now. Yeah, sand it up a bit. All right, moment of truth. See if we've actually done this right. I haven't got the hinges on the wrong way around or something. Don't say that. <laughs> hey. Nice. Huh. <laughs> Why do we leave things all over the floor? It gets so messy so quickly. I know. well doesn't it that's so nice when something you've been working on for a little while just works <laughs> what's quite cool as well if you've noticed we didn't plan for this but it exactly meets yeah. the top of that rail it's funny, isn't it? which is quite satisfying for some reason yeah and um, yeah decent amount of storage space as well you get loads in there let's just check that this one yeah that's still open because we're oh, going to have a six mil bit of plywood going all the way along the length of this bed so that we can pull it out with a handle on and they keep the mattresses in as well so yeah yeah what about the plugs on the other side and then yeah so we'll plug all right there we go i don't know if it actually yeah there you go there's no time to take a break but it's a nice varnished the subframe which is what we're calling it the bit underneath because um, there's no untreated wood in our van really every wood everywhere we've put some kind of finish on except for the bed slats and this top bit here with the slats and we, the reason we've done that is because we don't want any of the varnish or anything leaching onto the fabric so just for those bits they're the only untreated wood in the whole van sweet feels good right so just got to do back wall and these front pieces and that's the side pretty much done yeah i think it's getting there but now we have to paint oh. <laughs> bench seats what we had originally planned was just get some two by ones and put them just back there like this and then then we can screw our plywood onto those and that would have looked like this with our nice foam that we've got so it would have been something like that but then we were thinking not many chairs really have a completely straight back. We were thinking it probably would be a lot more comfortable just to have a slight angle on it. And you would lose a little bit of seat space for that, but we thought probably it's worth it. So what we did, instead of these, we made these, which have an angle on them. So, over there, and just 
one more there and then when we push the phone up to it obviously with the plywood on it then it just has a nice I think it's a seven degree angle which should be hopefully a lot more comfortable <laughs> This uh, right angle bit you got from Lidl, it's been a lifesaver. <laughs> Lidl always provides. <laughs> I don't know what we would have done with some of these ones tonight. I do love the middle of Lidl, not gonna lie. Okay. Yeah, that's nice, I like that. If only that was it, we didn't have to now do the other side. Yeah. So it's the next day, we're up early and we're just going to try and get as much of the other side done as we can today. <laughs> Hopefully it won't take too long. Let's do it. <laughs> First time I've actually used the seat properly. 74.8. most of it um, and now we just got to do the last bit with the straight bit of the fence so yeah do it the second time you always figure out how you can optimize it eh? yep there you go perfect <sighs> yeah it's a good day's work yeah all right yeah i'm pretty tired now need a beer wait i've got to back up a lot <laughs> <laughs> pipe thingy we put in. that is the construction finally finished. I think they look pretty awesome, don't you? Yeah, it looks good. Now, if we get our foam on there and one there, and obviously they are too big at the moment, both of them, but we, when we ordered them, we didn't know exactly what size our seats would be, so we need to cut them down. And what we've gone for is a six centimeter, pretty firm foam for the bottom and then a five centimeter softer backing just to be nice and soft just to lean back into so yeah we've got to make the covers for them now which i'm a bit daunted by but we've already done one there's a 
prototype almost for our little seat over there which is this one which my awesome sister helped us to make and taught us how to do it for the other ones so this is what it looks like in there which i think looks really neat yeah it's good so yeah i've just got uh four more of those to do hopefully <laughs> hopefully now that we've done one it won't be too hard to make the others i hope so one thing that confused us a little bit when we were buying the foam um, is um, the foam density. So kind of naturally thought that high density means it's firm, but actually you don't think it's like that at all. High density just means it's like, it's higher quality. It's got more foam in it. So it should take um, more repeated use over time, um, but it's not actually related to how firm it is. So this is a firm one and this one, yeah, it's a lot softer, but they're both high density foam. Um, which is what the company who bought them for calls their luxury foam, which is really good because they should be able to survive loads of use. Um, if you get the, the average one, I think they call it, it's the same firmness, the same squishiness, but it just might not last as long. So we thought we'll go for the luxury one. So this is going to be the only seat that we're going to be having in the van, pretty much. <laughs> So while Abby's inside carrying on with the bench seat cushions, I'm doing one of the jobs in here which we've been putting off for a long time, which is actually securing our drawers so they don't move when we're driving. Because, yeah, it's very, very loose. And um, this weekend it's Camp Quirky, so we're gonna drive halfway up across the country and there's gonna be things probably in these drawers. Um, so yeah, need to make sure they don't open. See if I can get all of that done before Abby finishes the next cushion. Press in and then hopefully transfer the mark onto there. So you can just see it one there, one there. Right, that is everything in the kitchen skewered down for the first time. Enjoy the weekend. All right. Have a few drinks and chill out for a bit. Yeah, sounds good. So we are at Camp Quirky and Abby is testing out the shower for the very first time. And uh, yeah, how's it going? It feels really weird. 
Good. Is it nice and hot? Yeah, lovely. It's been quite nice this weekend, hasn't it? To see, uh, give us a taste of what it will actually be like with a van pretty much done now, isn't it? Yeah. We're just, it's like a beast test, isn't it? Yeah. In a way. been doing in the house is just covering the foam with some Dacron wadding type stuff just to give it a bit of a poof so there's no creases anywhere and then on top of that we put this stockinette stuff just to make it nice and slippery so that it protects the fabric a bit more just open it there so yeah they've got the Dacron underneath that and that's the stockinette on top and it's yeah looks really good and then surprising how much easier it is to get in with that stuff on yeah when, when you're just doing the foam it's a nightmare just to get in the cover and then the fabric that we've got uh, is an upholstery fabric um, and we were looking at uh, the martindale score which is um it's basically how durable the fabric is so it's it's called a rub count i think like that and i think ours is about 100,000, which is very 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 heavy usage so hopefully these will last for a long time and and not fray or get holes in which is pretty cool yeah 100,000 is quite extreme but it looks nice and it feels it good so okay so yeah this is what our setup will be like we'll just pull one of our mattresses over Okay, easy. Yeah. And then put it away. It's easy as well. Start closing the bed up and you can push this one on it at the same time. It does help to have the back doors closed for something to push against, but you get the idea. There we go. Easy. And uh, yeah, I've just got a few finishing touches that I made a little while ago. Ta da! <laughs> one there. <laughs> I really like that. And <laughs> here we go. Smart furnishing is really completed, isn't it? Yeah, it does. Did a really good job with those. <laughs> it's actually starting to look like a camper <clears throat> now. Yeah, it is. I think getting the bench seats in has really like completed that kind of feeling for us, hasn't it? Yeah, it was kind of that hole in the middle of the camper van which we've now filled up. So yeah, really nice. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Get used to this. <laughs> Got to get used to it, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So I think finally that is the end of this one. Yeah. There's a lot more sewing than I was imagining. Yeah. Um, but. It did take a long time. Yeah. But, but it, it is comfy. It. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So yeah. what are we up to next? I don't even know. We'll probably end up doing the toilet next. Oh uh, yeah. Um, that should be a quick one. It should be a quick one. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. So yeah, we will see you next time. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Not too bad.